so far we've only been evaluating the first derivative, but we can keep taking the derivative function. So we can look at second derivatives, third derivatives, fourth, fifth, all the way out to nth derivatives. So whatever level derivative we want to take, we can find that. And it's really just applying the rules again. So let's take a look at an example where we're finding the second derivative here, and then we'll look at an application. So finding the second derivative, we have to start by finding the first derivative. So I'm going to evaluate the first derivative, which is our limit as h approaches 0 from f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So we are going to have, for our first function, output we'll have 2 times x plus h squared minus 3 times x plus h plus 1 minus just our function itself, f of x, which is 2x squared minus 3x plus 1 all over h. And then we'll start simplifying. So we're going to have a 2 times x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus 3x minus 3h plus 1. And then a minus 2x squared plus 3x minus 1. Again, I'm just going to emphasize, make sure you're distributing that negative there, all over h. All right, distributing the 2 through, so we'll have 2x squared plus 4xh plus 2h squared. Let's see what we have canceling out already, so minus 3x plus 3x plus 1 minus 1. So we still have a minus 3h and a minus 2x squared all over h. <laughs> so we'll have the 2x squared, so we'll cancel out. So what we'll have left over is the limit as h approaches 0. And canceling out h, we'll have a 4x plus 2h minus 3. Plugging in h equals 0, we're left with a 4x minus 3. Okay, all of that was to find our first derivative. So if I want to find our second derivative, what we're going to do is find our limit as h approaches 0. But now we're going to use f prime of x plus h minus f prime of x all over h. So... We're focusing on using our first derivative function here, so we're going to have 4 times x plus h minus 3. Then subtract our derivative function, which is 4x minus 3, all over h. So we'll have the limit as h approaches 0, 4x plus 4h minus 3, distribute the negative for a minus 4x, plus 3 over h. Let's see, 4x minus 4x is 0, negative 3 plus 3 is 0, so we just have 4h divided by h, so we're evaluating the limit as h approaches 0 of just 4, which there's nowhere to plug in h equals 0, so all we're left with is that value of 4. So our second derivative function is just 4. So no matter where we are on that function, the second derivative is equivalent to a positive 4. So just applying the same rule a second time. If we wanted the third derivative, we'd apply it again. So in terms of word problems, this is where acceleration comes in. Acceleration is the derivative of the velocity function, which is the second derivative of our position function. So again, our velocity function is equal to the first derivative of our position function. 
So let's say the position of a particle along the coordinate axis at time t in seconds is given by s of t equals 3t squared minus 4t plus 1 in meters. Find the function that describes the acceleration at time t. So first thing we're going to do is find the velocity function, which will come from taking the derivative of the position function. So we're taking the limit as h approaches 0 of s of t plus h minus s of t all over h. So that's going to be a 3t plus h squared minus 4 times t plus h plus 1 for our first function output. And then we're going to subtract s of t which is 3t squared minus 4t plus 1 all over h. And now we'll simplify. Okay, so 3 times t squared plus 2th plus h squared minus 4t minus 4h plus 1, minus 3t squared, plus 4t, minus 1, all over h. I got a bit squished there, but we'll write it out long here and see what cancels. So distributing the 3, we'll have a 3t squared, plus 6th, plus 3h squared. And then we have 4t will cancel out. 1s will cancel out, and we'll have a minus 4h minus 3t squared all over h. Okay, 3t squared will cancel out, and then we'll have h dividing out of each term, so we'll have a 6t plus 3h minus 4. Plugging in h equals 0, that'll leave us with a 6t minus 4. So that right there is our velocity function. So to go a step further to acceleration, we're now going to take the derivative of that velocity function. So acceleration, a of t, it's going to come from taking the limit as h approaches 0 of v of t plus h minus v of t over h. So we are looking at a 6 times t plus h minus 4, and then subtracting our function 6t minus 4 all divided by h. So limit as h approaches 0, 6 times t plus 6 times h minus 4 minus 6t plus 4, distributing that negative through. And we're going to get lots of cancellations, so 6t minus 6t, negative 4 plus 4, so all we have is a 6h divided by h. So we're evaluating that limit as h approaches 0 of just 6, which would just remain a 6. So our acceleration function is 6. So no matter what time we're at for this particle, it's accelerating at a rate of 6. And our units would be meters per seconds squared would be our acceleration. All right, if we wanted to do third derivative, we can keep going. I think we'll mostly just stick to second derivatives here, but we could keep continuing on with just applying this derivative function and evaluating.